Faithful, Redeeming the Time Brothers podcast, a podcast by Gene Kissinger and Norman Kissinger, two brothers who spent their lives in ministry and raising large families. Our desire is to provide a digital place for those who long belong. And as always, we want to leave a night light on for you. That night light is out of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 13, ta- Jesus talking to the church at Pergamos. It says, I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith. Even in the midst of temptation, you and I can live a faithful life. It's very easy to fall prey to the idea that we're not strong enough to overcome temptation. Now, it is true that in our flesh, we're not strong enough to overcome temptation. But the good news is we don't live in the flesh, we walk in the Spirit. And the Spirit gives us power to walk in victory over this thing called temptation. These individuals that lived in Pergamos, where Jesus is addressing this letter, they lived in the very hotbed of satanic activity. And Jesus mentions several things that he despises about that region, about that that city and what's going on there. But he thanks them for being faithful. You and I can learn to be faithful in our situations. Sometimes we wish that we lived in some idyllic time and some idyllic place where there was no such thing as temptation. But that's not going to be true as long as we live here in this fallen world. But we can be faithful in this fallen world. How do we do that? I think number one, lean on the shed blood of Jesus. We overcome by the word of our testimony and by the shed blood of Jesus on the cross, which allows us to move into powerful victory in every arena in our life. Remember that we're more than conquerors. We don't have to live with a spirit of defeat hanging over us like the sword of Damocles waiting to somehow fall on us, or we're like Chicken Little expecting the worst things to happen. Instead, we can expect victory in our in our world, in this world, because we have faith that is in a God who's out of this world. We also have the example of Jesus. We're called to walk even as he walked, and he walked in victory over temptation. Now, certainly we know that we won't be perfect as he was perfect, but we can, we can walk and follow his example and think, what would Jesus do if he were in this compromising situation that I find myself in? How would he handle this? What would Jesus do? And the best way to answer that is what did Jesus do? Become intimately familiar with how Jesus handled temptation, for example, in Matthew chapter 4 or Luke chapter 4, where he dealt directly with satanic temptation. He answered with the word of God, and he, he didn't buy into the lie that Satan was trying to push off onto him. So you and I need to develop a good Christian worldview. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, I thank you for these believers at Pergamos, and I pray that you'd help us to move in victory as we stand for the faith in this fallen world. I just thank you for these truths. I pray that you'd help us to grow in our walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you. I love you, but Jesus loves you so much more. Have a great night.